just going to, you know, they have to fill some slots, right, for speakers. So I'm one of those guys. <laughs> so I'm just, uh, how many of you have seen this car? On picture only, right? Yeah. Picture <laughs> Well, also in the museum, so yeah. if you've gone to the Yeah. Okay, so this was the Ford T. Uh, this was the first uh, car. Uh, so it was launched by Ford, so that's Ford there. So I just want to kind of tell you guys a story, right? So the idea being that, you know, I do a lot of uh, mentoring of startups. I also do slight, well, I dabble with some angel investment, and sometimes I've seen um, significant challenges in terms of the great idea, right, at a certain point in time, and the team doesn't execute well probably, and within a short span of time, the great idea becomes something to go into the dumpster. And unfortunately, I've seen two or three of those cases, and I've been closely involved with that, so not a very positive experience, but just wanted to share some aspects of that here. Right, so I'm calling this. That's where the angel investors be doing. Yeah, <laughs> that's this. Yeah, exactly. And my wife says, "What are you doing? <laughs> like, you're just burning money, right?" So I'm uh, just going to take off from there. Um, so uh, Henry Ford, right? So th this is a very classical uh, situation. So you know, most of us, right, have been taught that you know, uh, if you're going to look at solving a problem. Right, or, or you're looking at a pain point, go talk to the customer, right? Or try to find out what are the customer's pain points and problems, right? But Henry Ford had a different thing. He said, as he was designing the car, you know, people were saying, hey, do you think people will buy it? He said, you know what? If I go and ask the customers, they will say they need faster horses. They wouldn't talk about, you know, I need a mechanical contraption or whatever, right? And that's the basis of what I'm going to really share. So, you know, he went ahead, he said, people don't know what they want, I'm going to do this, right? Now I'm going to launch this, and he launched the Ford T, right? And quickly he captured two-thirds of the U.S. market, right? The one-third was imports from Germany and other places. Um, and all was going well, so as I was saying, Ford believed that customers don't know what they want. It's a very classical problem, actually, for startups. <laughs> so I wanted to confuse you guys more on this, right? And uh, so what he did was he said, you know what? I know what the, what the customer wants. He doesn't want fast time horses. He wants this thing. I'm going to just freeze the model. This is what I'm going to do. You take it or leave it, right? And I don't know how many of you, well, there are some of the younger kids. But if you grew up in the 70s and the 80s, it was a very similar case in India also, right? Pretty much anything you take, right? You could either buy a Fiat Premier Padmini, or you could buy an Ambassador, or at certain points in time you had a Heron and a Gazelle, I think it was, right? three or four cars. You know? So that was the model. He did very well for himself. Uh, now the question which comes up is, so uh, do you actually solicit customer feedback, or do you do something prophetic? Right? What could be the answer? Anybody? <laughs> Any thoughts? Yeah. So you build a you build a part of your product in such a way that it's it is based on the customer feedback and solve their problem what they want and the other part of it is what you build on what you think is right and what you think will work in future and that's how you slowly integrate it with what customers have been going through and then take it forward. Got it. Right. So unfortunately, Ford didn't do that. Right. So so maybe you should have been heading for. So have, if you go only by what customers want, then by what you have free markets, not a competition lends you, you would build a company but probably not a big one. But if you are profiting about something which you can see probably out of your experience, then probably you have a bigger, bigger chance to build capital, really acquire capital through that. Okay, good. So we have a fairly cognizant crowd. So that was the point I was going to make. Point, 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 counterpoint was always be in touch with your customer, right? Get, keep getting a feel as uh, he was, Naveen was sharing, you know, quick releases, always test feedback from the market. Unfortunately, Ford didn't do that. So GM came in and uh, Alfred Sloan, you know, who actually I think is a Sloan School of Management also, right? So he said, I'm going to make a car for every person purpose, right? So he just destroyed 
God. I mean, he's in a very broad sense. Now, because, and he said, look, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to launch uh, uh, cars on the lower end of the spectrum. I'm going to do high-end cars. I'm going to do installment selling. I'm going to do end of year, you know, uh, low cost selling, whatever. And he got, got the game on, right? And this is what he did, if you see. Now, that was the first Chevy which he launched. So that was the low-end model. The Cadillac was the high-end model. And he got Oldsmobile, Pontiac, and Boeing going. Guess what happened before, right? So they lost, uh, they came down to about one third of the market, then settled down at 15% of the market. And then Ford kind of woke up and he said, you know what, maybe customers want something more. And he launched what is known as a closed team, right, in the room, on top. You know, until then there was such an open car, right? Um, so what is this actually? Indicate and this was something I really wanted to share, right? So first things first customers did not want faster horses, right? They wanted more options. So typically when you are actually talking to your customers Sometimes, you know, the problem identification stage itself is a very critical part, I think You know, the ability to know what is the right problem to solve. Is it a symptom? Is it a cause or is it a problem? I think the ability to identify that is extremely critical Right? And to always be in touch with the customer, I think it's very, 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 very important. Right? To the point, where I'll share this story uh, of what happened. So there were these bunch of extremely smart guys uh, who were actually designing what was known as a variable. It was a variable device for cardiac intervention. Right? So people, you have a heart surgery, and then you know because of the Indian hospital system, you know the ICUs get full, so they want you out. Right? And what happens within those first three or four weeks after your heart surgery determines how long you live in life, right? And there's a lot of issues around that. So these guys were trying to do this, which would actually, you know, it was a very nice device called the butterfly. So it would probably be there with a patch and it would keep tracking your cardiac rhythms. And if there was a challenge, it would, you know, go to it, put it in the cloud. All that was great. So they came, they talked to me, great idea, wonderful. So the idea was within nine months you'd have a first proto, right? And <clears throat> 16 months we didn't have the first proto, right? And when we went back to the hospitals, they actually showed us three or four other similar devices. So, you know, so the ability to be in touch with your customers is absolutely critical, right? And just every point, right? Keep going back to them and say, yeah, you know what? I'm struggling. This is what I have. This is one more minute. Yeah. This is what I have. This, this is for the q and Yeah, fine. So this is what I have. This is not what I have. You know, I think it's very, very critical. This is not a Q&A thing, right? It's no, just a, five minutes long over. He didn't tell you. So I'm telling you the one minute of q You should be flagging that, actually. No, I was like, uh, you know, completely. Impressed. Yeah, nice. nice. <laughs> he told me. So I told him, okay. I thought he's going to tell you. So, so the time pass event was kind of interesting, looks like. Anyway, so that's something I want to leave away, right? So, so as we're mapping the, uh, you know, so pitch tune, the idea being pitched in pitch tune is to also map the journey of a startup through different phases, right? So we're starting with the first phase, which is I'm saying make sure you define the problem correctly, and make sure you're in touch with your customers all the time. I think that's what I'd like to leave you with in terms of the message.